for this crowd in this football team. They hit him quick. First play, Travis Miner goes the distance on a draw play. Then they came right back with a bomb to Peter Warwick. Just a jump ball, and then E.G. Green yards after the catch for the touchdown. So it happened very quickly, 21 to nothing. It's an amazing thing. 55 seconds also, as you look at the numbers, is all that took. Yeah, and Ron, you look at this, three yards rushing, and that's, of course, you got to take into a consideration that there has been five quarterback sacks for 36 yards, two turnovers by Virginia, running game of uh, Florida State. Of course, they got one big run, but they're having some success running the football tonight, 132 yards. Janikowski has the ball teed up at the 35, and this one is underway in the second half. Going to be about five yards deep, and Harris will return it. And he will not make it back to the 20-yard line. And let's check in with Adrian Carson. Adrian. Ron, decision has just been made by George Welsh as he came out of the locker room. There was a possibility that Aaron Brooks was going to go the second half, even with a sprained right ankle he suffered, as we saw late in the first half. But it's going to be Dan Ellis because he's the healthy one. He thinks he's got a lot of character. It's his game to win now if he can here in the second half. Okay, Adrian. And it's good to hear that that's an ankle and not a knee, Mike. Right. I don't think it's a matter now of trying to win the game with Dan Ellis, but it's an experience factor now. And Aaron Brooks is going to support him from the sideline. But gives Dan Ellis, who's a freshman, 6'2", 210, a chance to see what he can do. And you're exactly right. He needs the support mentally and also uh, with the help that he can be given from Brooks on the sideline. Counter play straight ahead with the running play, and it's Charles Kirby. And Kirby is out close to the first down as Dexter Jackson makes the tackle on him. Big back, 254-pound fullback. Florida State tried to tackle him high, and he just shows you his lower body strength. Trying to start Dan Ellis off with some plays to give him a little confidence, start the running game a little bit. Well, you hear that so often, but it is important. Well, it really Something is. to get him in a comfort level, right? Right. When you get the quarterback who's been sitting on the bench the first half, he hasn't played. You want to give him some confidence, and of course, Florida State wants to take the ball away. Sam Cowart uh, took the confidence out of that running play as he knocks it down for no gain, and it's 1 2 3 and Rotella in the punt. This is Dee Feaster, who is back in a deep receiving position rather than Peter Warrick. Sixth time that the Virginia has had to punt tonight. Not very long, but it's high. Virginia doing a good job of getting downfield under it, and it will uh, roll dead at the 39. 34 yards on the kick and nothing on the return. You take away the big plays of Florida State in the first half, and Thad Busby wasn't that accurate here in the first half. 8 of 21, you're right, one pickoff. So they'd like to see him warm up a little bit here in the second half. That's Travis Miner hit by Patrick Kearney as he takes it off the left side behind Brannon and Whitaker. And they're going to mark him down after a gain of a couple. Here's that passing chart you were talking about. Well, they about. hit the two on the left side, the E.G. Green and Peter Warwick for touchdowns. And uh, you look at his underneath throws right here. He's seven, seven for 12 underneath. But he really was a little erratic in the first half. Sure, Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, they got some big plays, but would like to see a little more consistency. Well, here's an interesting number. On the two touchdown passes, Mike, 116 yards, so that means on the other six receptions, only 25 yards. Busby, under heavy pressure, 
Back over the middle, throws it complete. Good heavens, what a hit. <laughs> Allegri comes up and puts a dramatic period and the end of that pass play. No first down. And the amazing thing is Damian Harrell is up and walking around and talking about it. Well, it's a good hit on Harrell. Peter Warwick trying to get open. Gets his hands open for Thad Busby, and there's the oh, hit. it was Warwick. I beg your pardon, like it an eight. So it was Warwick who suffered the hit, not Harrell. going to have the first down. Dingle is the man who steps up into the hole to stop it up. And the punting unit for Florida State comes on and standing ovation for the defense here at Charlottesville. It's good defense by Virginia. Not with Bobby Bowden one coming out of the second half. This is the fifth punt for Florida State tonight. Wilkins back deep. And Wilkins with a chance to return, but not much of one as he takes it to the 21. That's it. So there's a timeout. 10.40 left to play, third quarter. Florida State still leading by 23. Virginia! Welcome, Buddy Lazier. ESPN's presentation of college football, Florida State versus Virginia, is brought to you by builders of the completely reinvented 1998 Isuzu Rodeo. Isuzu, go farther. Well, we're back as you look on the sideline. Aaron Brooks having that ankle checked over again. It was our understanding we wouldn't see him again, but uh, there looks, it's very obvious, they're going to take the original tape job off. Now, whether they'll redo it, I don't know. But in the interim, there was a flag as we went to break. There was a late flag. Uh, Virginia was called for offside. It was enough for the first down, so the Seminoles have the ball again across midfield. Busby swings it out of the backfield. That ball was tipped, and it's Griffith again. And let's check in with Mike Tirico. Bobby Bowden's team is cruising. Terry team in a little trouble here. They were up 26-7, but in fade, built two touchdowns for the home team. Clint Sterner, 43 yards. Anthony Lucas, five-point game. Arkansas is down, and Auburn's facing the third down late in the fourth quarter. Okay, Michael. Well, that's a, that's a tough place to play on the road. Is now you look and they have taken the tape off, and Brooks's ankle is being encased in ice on the sideline. Played with Miner inside the 45 down to around the 43. Sweet makes the tackle. Travis Miner has shown signs tonight. The first play, of course, he broke for the touchdown. They're trying to get him a lot of work because they know the heaviest part of their schedule is coming up with North Carolina and Florida on the horizon. The rushing chart when you look at uh, to the right side he had the big run to the right side so the touchdown but he has he's been able to run behind Thomas a lot tonight 13 carries 135 yards for him as they get a screen pass out to him as a blocker in front that was Haven and he breaks it he may score at the 10 at the 5 he will score and Marvin Menace with an outstanding block Ron, we started charting at the beginning, the yards after the catch, and there was a missed tackle by Virginia, and it turned into be a touchdown. You better be able to tackle well against Florida State. Now watch this block by Haven, 78. He's out in front. Here's the screen to Miner. Now here's going to be the missed tackle. They missed it. Right there. Another missed tackle. And then the good block by Marvin Minnis. Extra point attempt is good by Janikowski. And let's take a break. 9.46 left in the third quarter and our new score, 37-7 of Florida State. Well, it's gotten a little chilly here in Charlottesville, but uh, only for the men in the dark jerseys. Uh, the folks from Tallahassee have been hot from the get-go. I mean, the opening play, if you just joined us, 
Uh, Travis Miner went 87 yards on a running play and we had just talked about they were trying to establish their running game or would try to do so and they did in a big way. I think Miner has definitely established himself as the man. Harris. Wow. Another. Stevens is the guy who got him. That was some kind of hit on the return. Well, he's a linebacker, and you like linebackers on your special teams. Stevens came down with a nice tackle. Dimitro Stevens, number 52, is just going to run through the ball carrier. He's another one just waiting for playing time there in the middle when Darrell Bush is finished up, which he's about to be. This pass incomplete. There's a flag pass interference. Samari Roll is going to be called for interference. Mickey Andrews liked that effort by Samari Rowe. Felt like he was in pretty good position. Pass interference called against Florida State, much to the liking of this partisan house here in Charlottesville. The Florida State just keeps recruiting well. Ronnie Cottro, the recruiting coordinator, just they just keep bringing in the, the number one through five classes every year. And that's what you were just talking about. The freshmen that are playing this year, they're playing a bunch of freshmen in backup roles. And they're also playing a couple of them as starters on the offensive line. Counter play, and it's not going to go anywhere. Corey Simon came through and just knocked that one sideways from the get-go. And no place to run with the football. In fact, the linebackers in the secondary are having a tough time to get up and make tackles tonight because the front four has done such a good job. And another sign. Now, this is a backup. Corey Simon's a backup. So Mickey Andrews and Chuck Amato and that defensive staff will play the younger players and, and get them on the field. That's Tony Bryan. He's the backup to Greg Sp Spires. And then the backup to Andre Wadsworth is Roland Seymour, 56. So they're all three in there. Here's Coward. He got by him, and then he gets knocked down as the pass is well overthrown. And again, Ellis took quite a shot as he delivered the football. Daryl Bush, I believe, is the man who came in and hit him. Well, they like to keep a veteran in with the younger defensive linemen. They're keeping their first-team linebackers in with the second defensive line. If you're a quarterback against Florida State, you need insurance. They will tattoo the quarterback. Adrian talked about knocking four quarterbacks out they played this year. They get after the pass rush. Four of 11 on third down conversions this evening. They try to swing the pass it, get it. That's Baber, the tight end over the middle. And they are going to have the first down out at the 48. Shevin Smith finally made the tackle. And Billy Baber's a freshman tight end that's been brought in because Casey Crawford, the tight end, has been hurt with a broken leg. And there is a flag down back at the 30-yard line. Offsides on the defense. Penalty has declined. First down. And Baber's a good athlete, Ron. He was All-State in high school in football and baseball. Also a basketball player. And they got a little delay going on right here. This is Baber right here. And you're going to see him run the delay. The linebackers lose him, and then he's up the field. Big thrill for freshman tight end. I tell you, it wasn't a thrill for Ellis, though. I'm sure he would say, turn around, turn around, because he just got smoked. Gets his pass away. There it is, complete to Kirby. Lamont Green in the tackle. Now, Mike mentioned that Kirby weighs 254, and he left a couple of people in his wake. When you hit him, you better bring it. <laughs> Lamont Green's pretty good size, too. He's 6'3", 230, but Kirby's 6'1", 254. There's Lamont. Lamont saying, I need to adjust my shoulder pads. I think he's hurt. His left shoulder hurt. sure did look like his uh, left shoulder was injured. And uh, we'll try to get a report on him. Played at the same high school, I think, what? He and Shevin Smith went to the same high school. Shevin, to me, one of the really good stories. And you like to hear these kind of things. And intercollegiate athletics was a walk-on. That's five years ago. Did not get a scholarship until his third year in Tallahassee. And it uh, 
Yeah, that's going to be moving it offsides against Virginia, so it gives us an opportunity to finish the story. Uh, it cost his mom a lot of money, and he, he said I'd have to look through the window and watch those guys eating at the training table who had the scholarship. And finally, after three years, uh, he, he got a scholarship. And guess whose scholarship he got? Randy Moss was kicked off the football team, and then they called in Shevin and said, you got a scholarship. Bowden's secretary told him, and, he, and the kid got tears in his eyes. He was so excited to finally be put on scholarship at Florida State. And he hasn't disappointed anybody, has he? No, he hasn't. Finally gotten a cafeteria on this field. Crowell, the intended receiver. Samari Roll working against him. This is the difference in college football and pro football. Pro football, you get that five-yard area, and then after that, you can't hit him. But Samari Roll going to use his right hand. He's got a hold of that jersey all the way down the field, guiding him and trying to knock him out of bounds. And Crowell has a point there. That's one of those things where the dark jersey was really hard to tell that he had a hold of it. Breathing kind of hard. Crowell is uh, speaking of a load to cover. He's a very good wide receiver. Here's the pressure. Watch from behind, and he's going to be sacked. Jerry Johnson. Six times they have gotten to the Virginia quarterbacks tonight, and very quickly, number 31, Frank Rotella will come on. And that's good coverage by Florida State. The linebackers in the secondary for Mickey Andrews' defense. There was no place for Dan Ellis to throw that football. Low pass. Florida State had the return on, so Virginia was fortunate. Deep Easter dropped the football and then paid for it at the 11-yard line. Frank Rotella's punt filled it by number 33. Antoine Harris is the man who was downfield on the cover. Antoine Harris. First down. And Feaster is very fortunate he didn't turn the football over. A lucky bounce. Six minutes, 38 seconds. Left third quarter. Florida State 37, Virginia 7. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten coming to you from Charlottesville, Virginia. This match is Florida State's worst start offensively of the night. Play action. Busby going on top, but he's thrown this one a mile too far for E.G. Green. Crowd again, an intentional grounding. He, he took a hit. <laughs> they know the signal. Yeah. <laughs> Seen it enough. Shannon Taylor, number nine, gets a good lick on Thad Busby. Play action fake. Shannon Taylor, number nine. Right in the face of Thad Busby. And they're backed up. They like to go for the home run. Ball comes loose as it hit the ground and was picked up by Phelan. And of course, the Virginia crowd wanted that to be a turnover. But they slammed to the turf and then the ball came out. We get back to the music and we listen to Nat King Cole and the trip. If indeed he starts to go to off speed stuff, the curve and, and the changeup that he's going to move. He wanted to look a little bit more Davy Ford also. And here comes Travis Miner back into the lineup. Ford goes out. Gonna have to hurry. Play clock is down to four, down to three. And Busby turns and calls a timeout. Couldn't go through his checklist there without getting a penalty, so they'll burn the timeout. 544 left in the third. We'll be back with more from Virginia right after this. Scales and tails, a unique seafood sideline, injured an ankle early on in the football game and has been a non-factor as uh, his head coach has decided that uh, he was not 100% and want to take a chance on him missing more than one ball game. So he is standing this one out. Busby on third down, rolls the pocket. That 
all the way back into the end zone. Now a wall of blockers. Goes long and got it complete. It nope, caught it out of bounds. Peter Warwick doing some kind of ad lib down the sideline, but he didn't come down inbounds. A lot of good blocks on that play by the offensive line once that Busby started moving in different directions. <laughs> now here's Peter Warwick. Here's what you have to do if you're a good receiver. You've got to run to the quarterback. Gets his hand up in the air to try to get the attention of Thad Busby. Just couldn't stand bounds. Bad kick off the side of his foot. And bounds out of bounds around the 45-yard line. College football next Saturday on ESPN. Game day at 11.30 Eastern, followed by our Big Ten afternoon game, Penn State against Northwestern. Then at primetime, Mike Adrian and I will be up in upstate New York as the 20th-ranked West Virginia Mountaineers take on the 25th-ranked Syracuse Orangemen. West Virginia, a big win today over Virginia Tech, and that has really opened up the Big East race. So that one's important next Saturday night. Michael? Ellis. Has his pass knocked away and almost intercepted by Troy Saunders. Back up corner now for Samari Rowe. Getting a little work. Troy Saunders, the junior, played that ball pretty well. Dan Ellis waited a little bit too long to throw that football. Good coverage by Troy Saunders on Jermaine Crow. Crow trying to use that 6-4 frame. Well, he not only knocked it away, almost came up with the interception. Shows you the good athlete that he is. Getting a lot of playing time for the backups tonight. Ellis, good protection, and that ball just went right through the hands of Charles Kirby. You know, three of Samari Rolls' eight career interceptions have come against Virginia. He picked off Mike Grove two years ago. That was here in Charlottesville. Then last year in Tallahassee, he got another one. This is Tim Sherman he intercepted on. And tonight in the second quarter, he picked off Aaron Brooks. So Samari Roll has been devastatingly tough against the Hoos. Crowell in motion. You saw they moved him from that fullback position. Pressure. Ellis going to be hit, and he will be sacked by Larry Smith. And, Mike, you were exactly right. Now, you got to give him credit for guts and poise. He stands in there, but at seven times, they've been sacked tonight. And he really had Jermaine Kroll open quickly for the short throw, but they still wouldn't have picked up the first down. We're under five minutes to play, third quarter. Oh, look at that. Seven sacks by Florida State tonight. And they're coming after the kicker, and there are whistles all over the place. And uh, Rotella, <laughs> you heard somebody say thank you. It, uh, it was Rotella. They had called a timeout just before the ball was snapped. Any one of four people could have blocked that one. Now time out to UVA. Let's take a look at the uh, standings in the ACC. North Carolina, Florida State, uh, still perfect. Uh, Virginia, they tied with Georgia Tech right now, but that's a momentary thing. Wake Forest at three and three, then Clemson, Maryland, NC State, and Duke. And of course, coming up two weeks from tonight, we'll be in Chapel Hill. And that's a matchup that uh, those folks down there have been waiting for for a long time. And I would remind you, Thursday night, they play down at Atlanta, and you mentioned uh, George O'Leary's team extremely tough. That's a dangerous game for them. It really is a dangerous game because Georgia Tech is good enough to play North Carolina off their feet if they're not all there and thinking about this matchup. Very high, very long kick. All the way back to the two-yard line. Virginia, you can't advance it. It is a first and goal. Virginia Cavaliers, and it's Antoine Harris. 
boy, talk about forgetting where you are on the field. That ball never should have been touched. Went right through his hands. Harris was there. He picked it up. You can't advance it, but the ball will be placed down at the two and a half. Now, Peter Warwick, uh, there's a 10-yard rule, and you let the ball go when, it's, when you have your heels on the 10-yard line, but he's playing center field here, backing up. And yep. Antoine Harris with the recovery. That is a muff. It's not a fumble, and you can't advance that. So the ball placed down at the two and a half, and uh, the Hoos have an opportunity to uh, push this one in and make it a 37 to 14 ball game. And Ron, you're going to see the first team defense in here for Florida State now. Timeout, Virginia. This would be a nice challenge. Mickey Andrews probably told his defense be a nice challenge for us. Give him the ball on the two-yard line, see if we can hold him out. Talk about that Florida State, North Carolina game. Everybody in the in the league has has is waiting for that ball game, Ron. North Carolina been a slow starter this year, but uh, Mac Brown's ball club is having a great year and they're very very good on defense they've yes. got two quarterbacks yep. Oscar Davenport and uh, Keldorf what is the status of Davenport is he 100 yeah. percent yet he practiced uh, Wednesday I was over there Wednesday and watched practice he practiced Wednesday and uh, the great thing about their quarterback situation is that uh, Oscar Davenport of course now is a starter but Chris Keldorf just had such a great attitude about it uh, you talk about you're looking for guys with great attitudes and Here's somebody who a lot of the pro people think is going to be an outstanding pro player, and uh, he now is relegated to the backup role, but yet, Ron, you talking to him the other day, I mean, he is as positive as anyone could be, so my hat's off to Chris Keldorf. So it's first and goal. Our situation, the muff of the punt just now by Florida State, and the Cavaliers got it two and a half yards away and it's Thomas Jones Tay Cody will come up to make the tackle and, and a quick flag goes down thrown by the side judge over here in front of us Offsides sides on the defense half the distance to the goal defeat first down Mickey Andros turn around to Coach Shimano there and tell him what he wanted called. Yeah, all defensive coaches want their team to rise to superhuman performance down here when you give the ball inside the five-yard line. They just think there's no reason to let them score. Get penetration up the field. Let's we'll see if they can do it here against Virginia. Didn't get in. They're going to spot it at about the one-foot line. Thomas Jones appeared for the world headed for the end zone. And they uh, they closed it up. You should look at Robert Hunt down at the bottom of the stack. The uh, junior out of Newport News, Virginia. The right tackle. So they have another shot. Second down. Second down. You can't, get, you can't get that ball any closer. <laughs> no. <laughs> Forty four point two coming into this game minus two rushing tonight. Well, quarterback sneak and Bush is the guy who got him. Virginia saying we scored. The officials don't agree. And uh, you see Ellis pitch the ball back to the official and it looks as though that one was a stalemate. You practice this situation in early fall practice. You practice it during the season. Uh, goal line defense. Florida State with their first team unit. Mickey Andrews, you can see, he does not want them in there. It's not anything to do. They've already got seven points, but it's a situation that may come up down the way with Florida or North Carolina in that ball game. Andre Wadsworth lines up over there on the left side. Third down and goal just inches away. Running play, and he didn't get there. Thomas Jones got cracked by Shevin Smith. Well, it's going to come down to fourth down because George Rush is going to go for this. And Mickey Andrews on the other side is uh, hoping his team can learn something on defense and the goal line. Good penetration by Florida State. I don't know if they're strong enough 
to get it in with the quarterback sneak. Here's scene number 90. Greg Spires Fire. got into the backfield there. No, I, I think it's going to be Thomas Jones again to try to get in. See Shevin Smith in the three-point stance on the right side, very close to being offside. And the handoff, he didn't make it. Yeah. He did not make it. Unless it's offsides on Florida State. Now they that flag it. is down, and I talked about it. Shevin Smith was in the three-point stance, and I believe he is the man that they called. And Mickey hasn't figured out that there's a flag down yet. But you know what? This is like coaches would love to see you replay, spe have to do special teams again. He's going to love it. They got to do it again. The penalty can't be more than an inch. All sides on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Replay this, fourth down. This has got to be the smallest penalty ever. I'm telling you. I mean, see, it's here. It, it's two inches away. It's right here. Yeah, it's Shevin Smith. I think that Spires right here, no. right? number 90. Well, I thought Shevin was lined up in the three-point stance. Okay. You can't get any closer than this. Right there. See, there he is again. This time he was onside. And touchdown, Virginia. Andrews is a tough dude. What he'll say to him is, you stopped him in four, which was regulation. You got yourself in trouble, and it, it took five to score. So he'll he'll make a positive out of it. You know, tell you, it was tough in five plays, wasn't it? Well, you know, you take a lot of pride. Mickey Andrews takes a lot of pride in his defense, and that was a man-on-man uh, -man right there. And he wanted to win that with his first-team defense. On the defense. Not the so much in this ball game, Ron, but it's going to come up eventually in a big game. And you want to be able to play great goal line defense. John Allen Roberts to attempt the extra point. pass but he got it up and he's good 151 left in the third quarter and our new score Florida State 37 and Virginia 14 Ron here's the touchdown little play action fake an option by Dan Ellis Daryl Bush scraping off just couldn't make the play and then this see the reaction of Mickey Andrews the defensive coordinator even though he's got a lead <laughs> The hat's coming off. Well, Dan Ellis, the freshman out of Exton, Pennsylvania. As I as I mentioned, you have to applaud him for his poise and uh, and stick to itness in this ball game tonight. He took some real blows. That will be the first of many touchdowns for Dan Ellis. Huh? I think you're right. The Virginia coach is Sparky Woods, who coaches the quarterbacks in high hopes for number 16, Dan Ellis. ESPN College Football coming up on Thursday. You start things off with Chris Lee and Kirk on the weekend kickoff show. That's at 7.30 Eastern. Then the fourth-ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina come to Atlanta to try to stay unbeaten against Georgia Tech. Thursday night here on ESPN. When I was over there uh, Wednesday watching practice, they were hoping Lee Corso would North continue. Carolina, yeah. North Carolina. They were hoping Lee would continue to pick against them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Lavernius Cole and Jermaine Stringer back. The two deep men for Florida State as John Allen Roberts kicks it off. Line drive taken at the nine. Stringer comes back to the middle of the field and he'll be down to the 31. This has not been a clean second half for Mark Rick's offense of Florida State. And when you say clean, you're talking about... A lot of mistakes. Yeah, yeah, they're going to look back on this tape and say there's mistakes all over this place, and uh, we need to stay with our concentration, stay with the focus, and play this game four quarters. 
And I think they'd like to see Thad Busby close it out here in the next couple series with a little success. 10 of 26, one interception, 189 yards and three touchdowns for Busby. And that ball, he just had to throw that one away. Closest man to it was Abdullah. <laughs> and the crowd's giving that signal again. The uh, illegal ground. Illegal ground. Well, they've given a couple of oh, signals they, tonight. That's the reason I want George, he's, he's giving it too. I think what George is yelling at, he wanted a lineman downfield. That was a screen pass. And the, yeah, the ball was not thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Back to Miner, still on his feet, tripped over his own blocker. That was Abdullah that he tripped over. Otherwise, you might have had some more big yardage downfield. Well, you set goals for the evening, and Adrian talked about it. We talked about it uh, right off of the start of the broadcast. And the running game was important. They wanted to get some running. Now, Travis Miner, 14 carries, 141. They'll be very pleased with his performance. E.G. Green comes back into the lineup. As you look at the numbers on Miner tonight, he has been outstanding. Busby, quick out pass. Well, he caught it, but he didn't pick up the first down. Warwick is who I'm referring to. Antoine Harris was and that, out there trying to cover. They're going to punt. Yeah, and that was not a good series again for Florida State offensively. They have lost their focus. Well, I also go back and say after the two long touchdown passes, which took up 116 yards, but the other passes they've completed, Mike, the average is going to be under 10 yards per reception. Very low. Charles Punt hanging. Fair catch is called for by Wilkins at the 25. 36 yards in the kick. And we have 38 seconds to play, third quarter. Bobby Bowden visiting with his staff upstairs. Thomas Jones, and they tried the right side. There's nothing there. Sam Coward, senior out of Jacksonville, comes over to make the tackle. That could be the final play of this third quarter as the game clock is down to 15 and now 14. Virginia coming to the line of scrimmage. I guess they could get this one off before the clock goes up. Ellis drills it, complete Crowell has the first down at the 38 yard line as the clock runs out and that is the end of the third quarter. So let's go away for a break, 37 to 14, Florida State leading big. We'll be right back. Virginia offense, and he has done a nice job. Corral in motion. Pressure all over the place. Gets it complete, and he's free. The defensive back fell down, and Crowell down at the 15-yard line by Dexter Jackson. Well, I just, I just said in the... Uh timeout and it felt like Florida State is like a baseball team it's the top of the ninth and you're you're gonna bat them they've sacked up the bats you know they they're not playing with the same intensity that they played with early Samari Roll missed the the tackle on Jermaine Kroll and this Ellis Dan Ellis has come in and give a spark to the offense of Virginia why he threw he was on rhythm on time on that pass otherwise Roll might have had time to get up there and get to him before the pass was caught. Short drop, got it over the middle, touchdown Virginia. Hawkins. Now Seminoles might 
got to get the bats back out. <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town here in Charlottesville. <laughs> Dan Ellis is his name. A nice thrown ball to Ahmad Hawkins. And the, 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 the bats need to come out of the sack. Extra point. John Allen Roberts is good. And look here. 14-26 left in our ball game, and it's 37 to 21. And these Virginia Cavaliers showing they've got a little bite left in them. Breaking the action. We'll be right back. Reich was likely to stay in the game and play first base after this at bat. Eisenreich had one of the biggest hits of this World Series in Game 3 in Cleveland with his team trailing 7-3. He hit a two-run home run that started their comeback. Ball one to him high. Here's what he did in the DH role in Cleveland. Games 3 and 4. Can't do much better than that. 4 for 6. In this series, I mean, he's been swinging the bat really well. The Marlins looked dead in game three, trailing seven to three until he connected. That really brought them to life. Two and up. Kenny Kaiser, you talked about him a moment ago, Bob, has, has really done a good job behind the plate tonight. I mean, both ways. Just off the outside corner, he's he's let him go. I mean, they've been waste pitches as far as Kaiser's concerned, but both ways, both clubs. Down low, three balls and no strikes. and second one down. Well, when we talked about the Indians' dilemma at the top. And by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Well, we are back in what appeared to be uh, a track meet early on and a distance job for Florida State. Well, all of a sudden, Virginia has come back under the guidance of a young freshman quarterback, Dan Ellis. He's led him to two touchdowns here in the second half. We got a brand new ball game, 37 to 21. Roberts to kick it off. We got Coles and Stringer back deep. alive. This kick's going to come five yards deep. Won't return it. Adrian, let's check in with you. Guys, forget the score on the board for a moment. There have been a number of instances where Bobby Bowden has been very upset tonight. We saw it on this last drive where Virginia scored here moments ago. Lack of concentration. Take it back earlier in the third quarter when Peter, well, Peter Warwick muffed that, uh, muffed that punt. When it was 21 to nothing, those three quick scores they let Virginia in the end zone. He does not like to see the lack of concentration there. He knows North Carolina and Florida are watching. Cannot afford to have that uh, kind of drop off when he takes his starters out of the game. And Adrian, one of the things he said yesterday was that they had not played well on the road. And of course, they started out tonight as hot as you can start off, but it has tapered off, and you have seen lack of concentration. Here's a running play with Miner. Reverses it, gets open for close to a 10-yard run out at the 29 and a half as Burnham put the stop on him finally. And what they would like right now, Ron, is to get this thing on a positive note now. Something happened positive for the offense. Here's Hawkins, sorry. Take away the big plays, and it's been not a good night offensively. No. Now sure. When has. you say that, there's 37 points on the board, but. It hasn't been the kind of night you'd like to see a, a well-oiled machine. The other eight completions for 38 yards. Now they'll have the first down as they go straight ahead with the with the keeper. 
And you know, when you look, and we've talked about the North Carolina and Florida games on the horizon, for, to me, that Busby really has to make plays in those games for them to win because their running game still is, even though they come out of this uh, looking better, still suspect. So all the pressure is on the quarterback. And the way North Carolina and Florida play defense, they are going to make that Busby win that football game for Florida State. So he will have to make plays. Pressure from the outside, sends the pass, has it complete, and that's Coles. Not enough for the first down, but it'll be second down and short. And let's check in again with Mike Tirico. Mike? We're on the late night game tonight on the deuce out in the whack is San Jose State hosting Air Force. Dan O'Dell, 21 it's yards to play. Oliver Newell. Dave Baldwin, San Jose State team. First time they've been on national TV in a decade within seven of one defeat Air Force. Okay, we'll get an opportunity to watch some of that one when we get back to the room, Mike. I'm looking forward to it. Second down and short. Busby waiting, gets it away. Wide open, the first down, E.G. Green. Boy, was he open. Down at the 34-yard line. 26 he, yards. Except for the touchdown pass, he's been relatively quiet tonight. We're talking about E.G. Green, an outstanding receiver for Florida State. You talked about earlier that Peter Warwick has gotten most of the headliners, and I was talking to Mark Rick the other day, and he said that E.G. Green is the most consistent receiver they have. They chart every pass that's thrown to him in practice in the game. He was caught 92% of everything thrown to him. Well, he's got three tonight for 116. Pass incomplete. Coles, the intended receiver, and uh, Dwayne Stukes was all over him. Ron, you got to credit Virginia's defense also. Now, they, they've coined Dexter, the All-American safety. is not playing. Adrian uh, talked about that. Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, does such an outstanding job here. And just think, we talked about this today, all the pro players that they lost into the draft last year. Ferrier, Sharper, Harris, Barber. I mean, all defensive players, and yet they're still among the better defenses in the ACC. And they got this guy, Poindexter, who's an All-American, standing on the sideline tonight. It's set up the screen. Blocker in front. Here goes Miner. Better get a hand on him. This is where he is so much like Dunn. And the fact that he gets behind a big lineman. And then he'll come forth with the spurt and run by you. And again, Ron, you, you talk about yards after the catch. And, of course, that's a screen pass. So you expect some yards after the catch. Travis Miner gets the screen pass. Gets some good blocking down the field. That's Jason Whitaker, 68. Sets up, throws it complete, incomplete, sorry. Marvin Minnis dropped the ball. He's another freshman. In fact, he's one that we were watching during the warm-up. Long, lanky young fellow, long stride, but very quick. And he's drawing a lot of comparisons to Andre Cooper, the Florida State receiver, about the same size. He's six foot one, six foot two, kind of slenderly built, and a glider. Second and 10, 12.06 to play in the ball game. Florida State, 37 to Virginia, 21. Got it, first and goal at the six yard line, and again, it's E.G. Green. Late break on the ball by Stephen Phelan. It's a little too late breaking on this football. That Busby was looking to E.G. Green. Long time in the air. And just not a good break on the ball. That Busby putting a lot of air under it to E.G. Green. And Stephen Phelan just gets walled off by E.G. Green. Well, four catches, 133 yards. Pretty good average, Joe. Almost 34 per catch and one touchdown. Looked as though he might have uh, struck that funny ball and he was working his hand as he came out. They go to the running play, right up the middle, touchdown, Travis Miner. You know, they took the bats out and hit a home run. That was the kind of drive they would like to have had in this ball game. Take the ball, the length of the football field, 
Good precision passes and then mix up and mix in a little run. Jenikowski set to attempt the extra point. And Travis Griffith. No, check it. It's uh, Maurice Anderson, 85. Injured, sophomore out of Blackstone, Virginia. Hobbling off the field and being attended to. And now his teammates have come over to help get him to the training staff. Janikowski is good with the extra point attempt. He is perfect tonight. So with 11-29 left in our ball game, 44-21, Florida State leading this one big again. As you may have read on the internet, independent brewmaster. An outstanding evening. 156 yards rushing tonight. Two touchdowns. He has caught six passes for 61 yards and another touchdown. I'd say that he has uh, written his name in the lineup yeah. to be the starter the rest of the year. I think you're right, Mike. I think you are right. Wilkins and Hawkins back deep for Virginia. This one to Hawkins, two yards deep. He stepped back. Going to bring it out. And probably wishes he had not. He's at the 13 and is down. With the NFL and ESPN returns next Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern with two of the biggest stars in the game today. The amazing Barry Sanders and his Detroit Lions taking on Brett Favre and the Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers from historic Lambeau Field. It's the season premiere of ESPN Sunday Night NFL next weekend right here on ESPN. And let's see if Dan Ellis can keep it going for Virginia's offense. in motion. That's who he wanted, and the ball well overthrown. Take Cody with the cover. Again, the way Florida State plays the wide receivers, they're moving Jermaine Crowell around a lot with motion to try to get him a free release, Ron, where somebody can't jam him at the line of scrimmage. Eight, 11-10 left in our ball game. Kirby hit by Lamont Green. That's a gain of a couple, but that's all. And it'll be third down, and the line to make is out at the 24. George Welsh getting a new stadium addition here. And I asked him when I was here for the Auburn game how long he wanted to coach. Uh, I think the answer is indefinitely. He wants to be here when the new stadium arrives. Ellis going to be sacked. This is eight times tonight. Seymour and Bryant, I think, are going to have this one, but eight times Florida State has gotten to the Virginia quarterback this evening. Well, they answered, Ron, the fact when this, with the eight sacks of the quarterback, the sign that we showed early in the ball game that they do remember 1995. And they didn't want to come in here tonight and lose again on their way to a possible national championship ball game. Easter is the man back deep for Florida State. This may be his best kick of the night. All the way back to the 38 yard line. Cuts it back. One man. And now here comes the flag. It's not going to matter. Beaster takes it back to the 25 yard line. Dean Beaster fills the punt from the cap. It was 51 on the kick and 37 on the return. But this one's going to be pushed way, way back. And Mike, as we wait for the penalty to be stepped off. Block in the back, on the run back, 10 yards, bottle of foul. 
First down. As we start coming down the home stretch on this one and kind of putting a period on the things the coaches talked about, Rick Lance, for instance, gave us some half twos that they had to do. And he said, we have to not give up the easy play. Five plays, three touchdowns. They got that early. We have to get turnovers. They have not gotten that as well. Timeout on the field. We'll take it with them. 44-21. Right back. Of Chinese food, Tallahassee's most delicious Chinese food is found at China First, a wonderful array of Oriental cuisine, extra long lunch and dinner buffets, seven days a week. I think China First is the best Chinese restaurant in Tallahassee. China First came highly recommended by a friend. Uh, we came together and I tried it and I love it. I like China First buffet because it's fresh and it's, they've got more items. China First is located on the corner of Capitol Circle and Park Avenue. Come see for yourself what everyone's talking about. Retirement planning is one of those things that you know needs to get done. But for some reason. So take a look at this. It's the retirement planner from Nations Bank. It's all the information you need written so you can understand it. But the cool thing is at some point while you're reading or maybe working through an example, you realize, I can do this. And that's when it gets done. Top 20 tennis players in the world take center stage on the fast court in Stuttgart. The EuroCard Open Championship coverage tomorrow at 1 on ESPN. A little too much curve? Uh, yeah. We are back, Charlottesville, Virginia, 44 to 21. The Florida State Seminoles, in case you joined us late, on their first five offensive plays, scored three touchdowns. They used 55 seconds, that's all, to go in front, 21 to nothing. They fake the running play, get it out of the flat to Pearsall. And the tight end is going to take it to the 36. And let's check in with Adrian Carson. Adrian, my man. <laughs> Ron, I'll tell you, that new stadium that Coach was talking about a few minutes ago is going to become a reality because of a man named Carl Smith. Played football here at Virginia in the late 40s and early 50s. Has made the largest single personal donation in college football history. $25 million to increase the stadium size here to 60,000. A few other details I'll give you after the snap, Ron. Second down, and the line to make is the 41 of Virginia. Busby from the shotgun, right over the middle. And he's got Miner, and Miner will pick up the first down. Adrian, continue. Well, here's the situation. They're going to enclose primarily what you see the hill down there with 16,000 seats. As I say, they'll bring capacity up to 60,000. But here's what we're going to have to do. Call this the David A. Harrison the third field at Scott Stadium. In the shadow of Brian Hall, all part of the Carl Smith Center, but that's your responsibility next time you come back, Ron. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the game's as long as this one. We'll have plenty of time to, uh, to give it several times. No, that's great. Uh, I talked to Terry Holland yesterday, the outstanding athletic director here, and uh, they, they've got a lot going on and a lot more work, he said, to get done. Busby throws back over the middle. There's E.G. Green. And look at this ad lib. Finally going to be tackled at the 19. He paid for it, but he picked up probably an extra five or six for his team. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Michael, what do you have? Well, Ron, with Florida State winning tonight, only one of the unbeatens going down today. For those of you who didn't catch it, Oklahoma State erased a 23-point third-quarter deficit, scored this touchdown, could have forced a third overtime with an extra point kick. They go for two in the win. Missouri stops them. Larry Smith's team is 5-3, and three, going to Colorado next week. Big win for Mizzou. Florida State threatening again. Busby set right over the middle. Ball thrown behind Menace. Couldn't hold on to it. I'm anxious to see Menace get a ball out of the open and see what he does with it, Mike. He's a he's an outstanding looking athlete. We watched him a lot in warm up. And Ron, you know, you also got to think now when we're going to see Dan Kendra or Chris Winkie, the uh, backup quarterbacks, because they say next year. Both of those young quarterbacks, um, they say Kendall will stay at quarterback. They, Winky is a talent, uh, a lot stronger and mature now that he's come out of baseball, and, but they will split time next year at the quarterback position. 
Will they keep it on the ground with Travis Miner? Patrick Kearney will trip him up. Going to be third down and long. Travis Miner. There's Kendra on the sideline trying to stay warm. Well, it doesn't look like he's coming in in the near future. Not back there throwing the ball and uh, just staying warm. He's stretching right now for the airplane ride. Uh, but he, the way he's built, he needs to make sure that, you know, that he is stretched out, that he is a cold muscle looking for a place to happen the way he's put together. That pass is incomplete on third down, so the field goal unit will come on. The clock shows 6.55 to play. Next Saturday night will be in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, West Virginia, and the Orangemen. And that could be for who's going to be the Alliance representative for the Big East. A lot of great players in that game. Famous Amos, of course, for West Virginia and Spotwood, Quentin Spotwood and uh, Donovan McNabb from Syracuse. So a lot of gifted athletes on that field. High pass. They get it down. 34-yard attempt is good. So Janikowski splits it from 34. We have 6.55 left in our ball game and the new score, Florida State 47 and Virginia 21. So let's take a break. We'll be back with more from Charlottesville after this. Nick, there is still one missile left. You must get to it before the others do. It's a 200 horsepower engine, too audacious to be kept secret. It's advanced climate control, engineered to keep you cool no matter what kind of pressure you're under. Son's birthday. It's the TL from Acura. The true definition of luxury. Yours. It's no fun to itch. That's why Owens Corning created Miraflex Insulation. It's made with a revolutionary fiber that's virtually itch-free. So it not only saves on fuel bills, it's more comfortable to handle and install. Use Miraflex Insulation because life is better when you don't itch. For a free sample of Miraflex fiber, call 1-800-GET-PINK. Over there is the East Village. You can probably feel the creative energy. I'm Tim Nye. I run a small business called Sunshine Interactive Network. Sunshine. We take artwork and make it available on the internet. Everything I do is because I love working with artists. There's always the, the tug between commerce and, and creativity. And we're back in Charlottesville for the final 651 of this football game. Some of the faithful have uh, finally given up. It's gotten rather chilly here in this part of Virginia, and uh, some of the folks have headed for the exits. But I'll tell you what, when it looked as though this thing was out of hand early, they were still very faithful and uh, committed to the effort. But uh, now they're looking for that warm heater in the car and the ride back home. <laughs> Rembert Young, uh, this is a hill. It's now called Rimbo Hill. But this, the, they were striking the cable last year, and Rembert uh, went down all 155 feet right there. And I understand the difficulty of the slide was about a four, and I think, I don't know, he graded close to 10 on it, something. This is way up there. Terrence Winkins, and let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, the Residents in College Football Scoreboard Show follows the game. All the highlights of today, including the wild finish in the Pac-10. Ortez Jenkins throws the touchdown, and Arizona can kick the extra point and go to a second overtime. But Lawan Givens of Washington State stops his old high school teammate. And in overtime, Washington State stays undefeated. Okay, thanks, Michael. Boy, close one there and a real close call. As we mentioned earlier, I'm sure the Rose Bowl with a little sigh of relief there because they still have an opportunity to have two undefeated teams in the Rose Bowl this year. It's Demetrio Stevens who steps up and makes the tackle on the running play. Just 
just playing it out now, Ron. Yeah. The, uh, Virginia just handing the ball off. And Florida State trying to protect the staffs. Under six minutes left in this one. Well, Hawkins stepped out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock and also stop the play, and it's going to be third down. And Kendra is warming up on the sidelines. You look at him, and for those who don't follow Florida State, you say that can't be a quarterback. He looks more like a linebacker, and you're exactly right. He weighs about 236 pounds. Is uh, a regular in the weight room, and as Bobby Bowden says... Absolutely immaculate when it comes to diet and watching what he eats. Here comes all out pressure, and Ellis is going to be sacked. Number nine tonight. And it's Corey Simon. Corey Simon, when he's coming to ball game, has made things happen for them. Well, we've used the term sacks tonight a bunch. Put the ball away, bats away, and a sack in Florida State. Have been after the quarterbacks nine times. For minus 57 yards. It's a highlight film. Frank Rotella standing back to kick here, coming after him. And kick goes straight up, not real far. Feaster runs away from it. Now takes a Virginia bounce. And it's go dead, uh, gonna go dead inside the 40-yard line. Next Saturday at ESPN2, starting in the Big Ten at 1230 Eastern. Good luck from Iowa City. Uh, number 23, Purdue taking on 19, Iowa. Then at 6.30, 15th ranked LSU is in Lexington to meet the Kentucky Wildcats. All next week on the Deuce. LSU now, they, they lost to Ole Miss, and they were off this week, so they've had, wow, two weeks to sit with that one. Dan Kendra in the ballgame, the sophomore out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Hang on if you got to tackle him. Oh, I mean, the ball came loose, and he recovered the fumble, but I think he picked up the first down. It's Isabel who came up to make the tackle. Now understand one thing, Isabel's a 235-pound linebacker, and he gave away a couple on that one. That was a great tackle and a great uh, lower the shoulder by Dan Kendra. Isabel is 6'1", 235. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Mike. If, if Winky were to step up and really become a, a situation where you he With, won the job at quarterback. Why could Ken, could Kendra be a fullback type uh, tailback? Oh, I think without a doubt, and then probably be an outstanding one. But again, you don't want to move a player unless they really are yeah. for the move, because their heart will not be in it if uh, and they don't want to move. Chris Winky, they I talked to Mark Rick about him. He said he is really mature and he has got a lot of ability. Here's the running play. This is Davey Ford, and he takes it for a couple of yards. And I'm not suggesting that Kendra is not going to win the job next year, but just saying when you got two guys who are very talented, you want to get all those talented folks on the field you can. One thing about Florida State, and they've done a great job of keeping quarterbacks in waiting. Uh, you know, when, when Charlie Ward was playing at Canal, and uh, they, they bring him along. Thad Busby sat waiting for his opportunity. Now it's Winky and Kendra waiting for their opportunity. But you're right. Most quarterbacks can't go to another spot. Uh, but obviously, Kendra could. Linebacker, running back, fullback. Kendra sings the pass as it complete. That's inside the 35-yard line. And it's Donaldson, Carver Donaldson. As Busby, we can draw a line on him tonight. 285, three touchdowns, one pick. 18 of 39. And yards after catch by his receivers, 155. Once they caught that football, they do a lot with it. What a luxury to have. Mm. I'm telling you. Does a lot for the stats. What a luxury to have. Ah. 
Ford back into the boundary. Tries to turn it up and he gets knocked down at the 31. Close to a late hit, but uh, no flag and the clock will continue to roll. We'll go under three minutes now left on this one. We mentioned next week we are in the Carrier Dome for West Virginia and Syracuse. And two weeks from tonight, we will be at uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And the matchup between the same Florida State Seminoles and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Anxious to see that one, Mike. I think the ball game next Saturday night, the Carrier Dome is going to be awfully Could good. be an outstanding game. Forward again. Hit from behind by Griffith. And Davey Ford looks like he has quickness at that running back position also. A little more wiggle than straight yeah, ahead. He's got some wiggles to his step. He's 5'11", 188, freshman. And with Travis Miner, that gives him a little bit of depth. You know, it's interesting how a team like Florida State, and I, it's, I know it's the way they recruit, it's what they look for, but it's like they call Central Casting and say, we want a quarterback that's between 6'2 and 6'4 and weighs about 220. We want tailbacks that are about 5'11, about 185, and run a 4'3. Here's Ford. And he's down to the 14 yard line, and poof, they, they, there they are. Cookie cutters. Yeah, they're using a lot of cookie cutters around the country, but. Uh, There's Travis Miner, yeah. just that same. Well, he's 6'1, though, a little bit taller. And Ronnie Cottrell, the uh, recruiting coach, he coaches the tight ends also, uh, who heads up their recruiting. I don't believe there's a better guy on the phone or better guy recruiting than Ronnie. I mean, he does an outstanding job, and the kids like him, and uh, he is just a, a relentless recruiter. Now forward to the other direction, and this time they solved it. That's uh, Donnie Green, the redshirt freshman out of Hampton. Well, tonight's Visa players of the game are from Florida State. Travis Miner, 227 yards, three touchdowns, and from Virginia, Jermaine Crowell, 163 receiving yards. That's a career high. And as part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa proud to donate $1,000 on behalf of these two athletes to their school's general scholarship fund. One a freshman, the other a senior. Ford, no place to the right. Let's take it back to the left. Still on his feet as Williams and Green will combine on the stop, and they are short of the 10-yard line. And before we put a period on this game, uh, Dan Ellis has established himself here tonight as a quarterback of the future for Virginia. You're exactly right. And, uh, you know, I know he'll look at the scoreboard and say, you know, big loss, but he came in under extreme duress and, and played well. He played very well. 16 seconds, now 15. Kendra. Going to take off, and he's down at the five, and that'll be the final play. Two seconds, down to one, and this one goes into books. Florida State has avenged what happened here two years ago. Final 47 to 21. Stay tuned. The residents in college school board is coming up next. And don't forget, next Saturday night, we'll join you for the Big East as West Virginia takes on the Orangemen of Syracuse. For Mike Godfrey, Adrian Carson, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's join Mike Tirico. Okay, Ron, thanks. So the Seminoles get North Carolina State before the game in Chapel Hill against North Carolina. Florida State makes it seven teams with a perfect season going into November. We welcome you to the Residence in College Football Scoreboard Show. Chris Lee and Kirk will join us from a chilly East Lansing in a little bit. With you till about the top of the hour on Sports Center. we'll tell you about the day in college football. A day when Michigan took on Michigan State in a big, big battle in the Big Ten. Missouri. Try to knock Oklahoma State from the ranks of the unbeaten. And Ryan Leaf, number one in passing efficiency. Could they stay perfect as well? Jerry, there's too much clutter. Let me know when you've changed. Change. Jesse Cush in a punt situation. His kick blocked by Kansas. But Joel Makovica scoops up the ball and takes off behind Nebraska blockers. First, Octavius McFarland flattens one Jayhawk. Then moments later, watch Chad Kelsey clearing a path. 
Makovica would pick up 20 positive yards, and actually a Nebraska first down. First play of the second quarter. Nebraska, a more traditional big play. Scott Frost on the keeper on the option, bolts up the middle, 27 yards with a touchdown. Makovica added two scores. Nebraska wins, and they win big, 35-0. Frost rushed for 121 yards and two touchdowns, powering Nebraska by Kansas for the 29th straight year. For Nebraska, it's their 10th 7-0 start under Tom Osborne. Bob. When Thomas Jefferson founded the University of Virginia, he encouraged plenty of debate, but he might not have had in mind Virginia tackle Doug Karzewski calling third-ranked Florida State just another ACC team. No, Bobby Bowden wasn't coaching football against Jefferson, but his answer does speak volumes. They feel the way you got to feel, and they've done it before, he said. The Cavaliers, of course, the only ones in the ACC to ever beat the Seminoles. Of course, then he probably put that note on the bulletin board and took charge. First play of the game, Travis Miner takes the handoff from Thad Busby and does what Warwick Dunn wishes he could have done on the last play, the last time they were at Scott Stadium. Goes for a touchdown, 87 yards, and after 24 seconds have come off the clock, Florida State's up 7-0. On their second possession, after Thad missed, Busby missed a couple of passes, he goes deep to Peter Warwick, who makes the great leaping catch for a 38-yard touchdown, 14 zip Seminoles. On their third possession, Busby fakes a handoff and will fire it to E.G. Green. 74 yards later, stop the fight. It's 21 zip after five plays. The Seminoles have three touchdowns and 53 seconds of possession time. They go on to win it 47 to 21. The Seminoles' number one overall defense allowed minus nine yards rushing to the Cavaliers. In his first start, Miner gaining 159 yards on 17 carries. He also caught six passes for 68 yards and scored three times. The Seminoles will visit Chapel Hill in two weeks for the ACC showdown. The big game of the Big East, Western we lose the DOS and Virginia defers to the second half, you might want to want the football first because, oh, boy, it didn't take long. If you were going to do that, boy, you would take it because you get the, especially when you're away from home, because you get the crowd out of it, don't you? Oh, yeah. <coughs> we, we, that's Benez Gooch there from Jacksonville, Florida on the kickoff. We fumble it. 36 there, throwing a block. Who, who is that? Is that uh, Damon Carroll from, yeah. from Tallahassee, Florida in a walk on. And there's the first play of the game. E.G. Green gets a key block on the safety. Our offensive line blocked real good. I was very proud of them. Pier Pierce Saul and Trey Thomas and Jason Whitaker and Kevin Long and Kevin Lord over there makes, a, makes a sack there. He's from Mandarin High School, yeah. <clears throat> he makes a sack. Now here's the point. Watch, watch old Peter Warwick pick this from the running back. Boy, I hit our, our guys blocked so good. Number four there, Saunders. Troy Saunders and uh, whoever our other corner was. It could have been Smart Roller. It was one of our corners. Well, they did a great job of blocking, but uh, good return there by, the, by Peter Warwick. He's a very dangerous punt returner. I watch Brad on the first play here. He finds uh, Peter Warwick down here in the end zone, makes a great catch, and touchdown. That's what we talked about last week, about the overthrowing so much. This week, he, he gave a chance to catch it. Course, yeah, good, good, good coverage by the DB there, but he just out jumps. Oh, yeah, Peter, Will, Peter Warwick, he'll take him in most cases on that in that, uh, doing that right there. Two series, less than four minutes into the ball game, and it's 14 to nothing Florida State. We're on the road, Coach. Uh, we're, we don't start this well on the road. I know, and that's exactly right. Watch this next time we get the ball. Here's about a 74-yard touchdown 74. pass. He hits over E.G. E.G. shows his speed and outruns this guy 74 yards for a touchdown. We have a 21 to nothing lead, and I'm wondering what's going on. E.G. Green, 151 yards, back-to-back 100-yard-plus -back receiving games, and he's going to score. This is career touchdown number 23. Look at him break away from oh, the Oh, he is really, he's, he's approaching uh, Larry, uh, Barry Smith's Smith Smith record, record isn't he? Two away from tying. Isn't that something? And with two long touchdown uh, catches in the past two ball games, E.G. Green from Fort Walton Beach playing great football. Yeah, he's really playing great football. But look at our defense. Our defense is playing good. There's number, there's old Roland Seymour. I like him, number 56 from uh, New Orleans, just a freshman. Playing real well. The guys really playing good. Of course, they score on us there. How did they get the ball there? Did we? Did, they just brought it oh, right. Oh, is that where we had a fail? I got fell down. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, they I, threw a long pass. A DB, DB fell fall, down falls down. Take it to the goal line and they knock it in. That's dumb. Forty-eight yard completion. To <clears throat> set that one up. Yeah, that's right. But coach, also, I think twenty-one to nothing may have helped uh, he, set oh, that up too. <laughs> oh, sure, I'm, I'm sure. Now here's, uh, he, he throws the ball away again. Uh, nobody down there. So that get ground. They got him for grounded twice. 
I rushed was so so fast on me and have time to find out where everybody was. Now here's uh, Peter Warwick again. Watch, we're getting some good blocking. Uh, 27, that's... Uh, that's uh, uh, Tay Cody. Yeah, Tay Cody out there blocking so good. Boy, they did a good job. Tay and Saunders. After scoring uh, 21 straight points on the first three possessions, we get in a little punt duel oh, here with here. Virginia. But this look at Keith Lavernius Coles, Lavernius Coles, and Tommy Potty uh, down the ball. We stop them right here. Now watch that quarterback. He's going to roll out here, and he's going to step out of bounds and give us two points. That punt by Keith Cottrell, a freshman punter, is going to set up a safety. I saw his dad. I got to talk to him uh, when he was down there. I saw Jerry Moon's uh, dad yeah, Brooks and mother. Out. Yep. Who, and then see, that's where he stepped out of bounds. Yeah. Watch him see his foot. Steps out of bounds. We get to here comes number ninety, Greg Spires from Fort Myers down around Cape Cod in that area. I made it twenty-three to seven, coach, and uh, we're going to move into the second quarter. We're going to score some points and become a nightmare for wow. the opposing quarterback. Yeah, good catch there by Travis Miner. He, Travis Miner had two hundred twenty-six total yards. Watch it here again. Another catch. Not only did he, uh, not only did he uh, run the ball good. Now here is Khalid Abdullah. This is a <clears throat> down play. Fourth and one. He takes it right down the goal line. Good running. Gee, it looked like he might have got over. Oh well, Lamar Glenn there thought he might have got in. He didn't. So he'll take this next one and get his first touchdown this year, right, Gene? Bobby, I don't think a Seminoles ever scored and gotten a call down to that close to the goal line at that end zone. No, I know. <laughs> that was right the spot. Now. But where work done was, was right there. Right there is the spot. The that's distance the was the same, spot. six yards. We finally got that one in there. Khalid Abdullah, junior fullback from where? Davy, Florida. Yeah, Davy, Florida. And uh, we have a no 37 way. lead. Uh, yeah. I think it ends up at the half. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Who's that, uh, number 85 again? Yeah, his third, Andre Wadsworth had three, three quarterback sacks uh -huh. in the second quarter. Second quarter. Of yeah, I saw Corey Simon back there pushing his way back. Yeah, he, uh, Corey, Corey, Corey. Tony Bryant rushed good. Yeah, Corey got his first career sack a little later on in the ball game. Yeah. Coming up, a great moment in Florida State football, plus we have the highlights of the second half of Believe Me. That was quite a football game. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. How's we going? Love it. Oh, great play by E.G. again, isn't it? Yep. He goes ahead. He, he had his chance. ninth career 100-yard receiver. Give him yes. a chance. He'll catch the football. Great job. Great coverage. I mean, gee, the guy's getting wrapped up. Yeah. And here comes a, another run. Good blocking. Kevin Long must have played a good uh, game. Him, him and Trey Thomas blocking at the tackle. Jason Whitaker, I know, did a good job in there. And uh, uh, Heavens and... Uh, we're all smiling. But Carmichael, we played Carmichael a lot because Brennan got hurt. Now here, here's number 19, E.G. Boy, he's doing something with the ball, ain't he? Yes, he Catching is. the ball and making 12-yard gains further. Here's Janikowski, comes in, kicks a 34-yard field goal. Uh, Clay Ingram in there, gets a good snap, puts it through there, and now we got a 47. 21 lead, and that's it. We're going to sit down on the ball now. We're not going to throw anymore. And then Coach... Uh, we, we, uh, we put Kendra in the ball game right there, and yeah, he runs. on the run. Yep, he runs. He, so he picks up He picks up the first down. 7-0 and the Seminoles are, and Coach, a 47-21 <coughs> to 21 win over the Virginia Cavaliers. And whatever you told that offense uh, when you ran down there in the fourth quarter, it must have paid off. They went uh, 80 yards in nine plays, got a touchdown, they got a field goal in the next possession, and uh, we win right, sort of going away. I wish it was something I told them, Gene, but I think they just realized, I learned them that, hey, they, they, the other team's got momentum, and we need to take the football and score. And, and we did, and it was over after we got that one. Seven and oh overall, and in the Atlantic Coast Conference, uh, number one tied with North Carolina. It's homecoming week at Florida State. In just a moment, we'll look ahead to all the festivities. Follow FSU on the Seminole Sports Network this weekend 